Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to talk about the C programming language. Yes, C, invented in 1972, that state-of-the-art cutting-edge programming language. And to be honest, I don't think a lot of people that are working now have ever worked with C. You think of C and C++ together, but you'll find C is this nice, small, and elegant language, whereas C++ isn't. And people kind of don't realize the simplicity and elegance of what C can be like. The problem is C can also be problematic. It can be very insecure. You can have a lot of holes in it because you're directly working with memory all the time. Now, working with pointers isn't necessarily as scary as it sounds, but having your program crash because you are working directly with memory, well, that part is definitely unfortunate. So that is where Checked C entered. Now, this is a project from Microsoft Research. It's been going on for quite a while. It was established in uh, 2015, but they keep constantly updating it. So what Check C is, is a version of C built on top of open source. So don't be scared of the whole Microsoft thing. This is actually built on top of the Clang compiling tool chain. And it used to be on LLVM, but they merged that into all the Clang um, tool chain. And by the way, you can use Clang with Visual Studio 2019 if you so wish, but you can also use the compiler tool chain completely from the command line with your own, like with C Lion or whatever tool you want. This is also available on Windows and Linux. Although in the Linux world, you're going to have to build it yourself. That's much more common in the world of Linux. In the world of Windows, there are pre-compiled binaries, although they are a little dated, as we will see in a second. So this is all about extending the C programming language to write more secure and reliable programs. We're going to skip over all of that overview, and we're going to jump right down here, and you're going to see some of the details here. Now, C is crucially important to the world, even as a 40-year-old programming language, because most of the operating systems, device drivers, Linux OS kernel, a lot of these things are written in C or C++. When it comes to embedded systems, C is still heavily used. And in all honesty, some of the most beautiful and elegant code I have ever seen in my life was written in C. Take C++ and get rid of classes, templates, all of that stuff, and it becomes a heck of a lot cleaner. Get rid of the inheritance, get rid of all of that stuff, um, and then you basically have this nice kernel of a programming language. And that's what C is like. If you've never used it, I do recommend looking at some nice clean C code. But there are problems. Buffer overruns, incorrect typecasts. A lot of the times you are working directly with memory in C. And when you access memory that isn't yours, that causes problems. At the same time, if you open up a security hole, you do something like a buffer overrun and a hacker could take advantage of that, they can inject code into yours and cause security breaches. So you can see here in C, programmers use data to act, uh, pointers to access data. Pointer is the address of a memory cell. It's easy for programmers to make mistakes when working with pointers, such as program reads or writes the wrong data. Mistakes can cause programs to crash, misbehave, or allow them to be taken over by malicious adversaries. Check C allows programmers to better describe how they intend to use pointers and the range of memory occupied by data that a pointer points to. This information is then used to add checking at runtime to detect mistakes where the wrong data is accessed instead of the error occurring silently and without detection. This information can also be used uh, to detect programming errors while the program is being written. The checking is called bounds checking because it checks that the data is being accessed within its intended bounds. Uh, the name check C reflects the fact that static and dynamic checking is being added to C. So really that's all they've done. They've taken C and given the programmer the ability to be a little bit more expressive. You can actually define some things that you couldn't before. You can say, this array goes to this bounds. And if it goes out of those bounds, the compiler will catch it. And this allows you to write more stable and secure code as a result. This kind of stuff is built into C Sharp and Java and modern languages. Again, C was built in 1972, and in some ways we couldn't afford the luxury of having the compiler do extra checks or um, runtime type checking and that stuff. The world today, much different way. But the thing is, this still keeps the heart of C in place. You're still talking about a fast, simple, low to the, um, close to the metal type programming experience. So if you want to check out Check C, it is available up on GitHub. I will link the repository. It's under an open source license. I forget exactly when. We'll get back to that in just a few minutes. Uh, it is being actively updated. As I mentioned earlier on, you can get a Clang a compiler for Linux and Unix, but you've got to build it. Or you can download a compiler for um, Visual Studio plugin kind of thing. Uh, that, uh, that compiler is kind of out of date though. So what you may want to do is get one of their nightly builds. And there's also some details on the extension. That's what we're going to get into right now. now. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on all of the things they've added to the language. There isn't actually a ton that they added, uh, but some of the key things that they added are a new pointer, a new array, 
um, and then a couple different versions of those things. So we've also got interop support, so your existing C code uh, can run just fine. This is a super set, but you can also uh, kind of do a layer or a wrapper over top of things to add type safety to them. You're gonna see they've actually done that with a couple of the standard headers. Um, but the big thing here is I've also got support here for generic functions and generic structures. Now, one of those things that was heavily used in the world of C, when you've got a, I don't know what this is, you don't have polymorphism or objects or inheritances or virtual interfaces or all that stuff in the world of C. So when you want to have a data structure that can be multiple things, that's where you often used void pointers. Now, the problem is when you have a pointer to memory that can be just about anything, that's problematic. So what they've done is they've implemented uh, these generic structures on top. So they're, they're still pointers to just about anything, but you can now tell the compiler a little bit more that I'm dealing with pointers. These should be here. These are how they should be formed and, and they work from there. So let's go take a look at uh, some of the new extensions they've added. Again, I'm not going to go into full detail here of the new pointer and array types, just the top level ones. So we've got a new pointer type of underscore pointer. Uh, underscore capital PTTR. Uh, all of this stuff is prefixed with underscores, just you know it's an extension and not part of the core language. Um, but the underscore pointer does not allow uh, ar arithmetic. And you'll notice things use a, um, a standard, like a template type approach to declaration. I'll, I'll explain how it works in just a second. Uh, then we've got an array pointer type. So if you have the, um, you're going to be working on pointer, uh, multiple pointers together. Uh, you need to do some direct access to those pointers. You can handle it that way. And then if you've got null terminated pointers, which are extremely common in the world of C because every string, for example, is a continuous chunk of memory null terminated. So what it means is you've got all these values and it will read them until it hits that zero or null. So uh, that's a very common data structure and they've got this NT uh, array pointer for dealing with things like strings, etc. We've also got checked single and multi-dimensional arrays in here. Uh, null terminated checked single dimensional arrays, uh, pointer types without pointer arithmetic and pointer types with pointer arithmetic. And again, it's the array pointer versus just the straight out pointer. But what this is basically allowing you to do is give a little bit more information to the C compiler so that you can write safer code because it knows, okay, an array, here's my array, it's only supposed to have five items in it. And if I access item number six, instead of potentially crashing or whatever, it's going to be able to tell you, okay, that is an error. So let's go take a look at some very simple examples of how this works. Probably the simplest way is start with a hello world. And this actually illustrates it pretty nicely because in C, uh, our, the uh, main is passed in two arguments. The first one is a count of values. The second one is a pointer of type pointer of char, and which is basically, you can think of it as an array of strings. And what they do here, and you can see the simple example here, so you still have your normal argc count in, and this is all of the new syntax. This is all they've really changed. So instead of having char star star argv and then potentially accessing a value that doesn't exist, what you can now do is say, and this is an nt, so null terminated array of pointer. And again, you've got that C++ template style syntax here, just the, uh, the greater than and less than flanked uh, of the, the type argv, so that's still the name. So you're declaring a variable of argv that is in a checked array. And then what you're doing here, see this colon, and then this value here, this value is basically you passing in the bounds of your checked array. So what you're declaring here is, this is a null terminate array of type char uh, that is got this many values in it. So now if you go ahead and you start accessing argv down below, and I said, let's say I passed in two, but then I went ahead and used uh, two as my value, which would actually be the third element because in C you count from zero, very common rookie mistake for sure. In the world of C, the determination there is an iffy. Your, your, code, your code could just be weird or your code could straight out crash depending on what actually is in that memory beyond zero. Now, a lot of times you get away with it because you zero out all the memory and it would just it would just work, it would just be empty. But other times it would crash. And this implemented all kinds of stability problems and bugs, etc. That is what this simple syntax extension changes. Now I will tell you straight out, arg star star, um, or sorry, char star star arg v was definitely much more terse than this, but this is giving the compiler the power to actually say how big that, um, that array should actually be. And we've got other ones here too. So here's an example of, um, some of the string examples being done here. And here you're gonna see, again, a null terminated array type. We have, and then here we're saying this is a checked function, like there, and um, yeah. So this one, okay, so even as a parameter, you don't have to pass in the bounds, but here you can see, once again, you're saying the bounds of that particular uh, array, which is 
uh, kind of the way things go. I don't see a straight out pointer example here. Uh, but here you can see how you basically can take standard uh, a C style code and add this layer of checkness on top of it without a real nasty uh, surprise as a result. And, and you also come down, there is a more advanced set of things here. So you can see here a number of different functions here that are being implemented as examples as well. I mean, everything here, oh, no, no so that one's a writable pointer. So this one isn't using an null terminated pointer. This is literally just an, a writable pointer array. But again, you're passing in how many of them you are dealing with, which is, uh, useful information to the compiler. So that is in a nutshell, checked C. This is all up on GitHub. It is an open source project. As I mentioned earlier on, the license is here, but I don't immediately see it. Now, one of those things to do check out though, um, it's under some proprietary, it's got, it's, uh, I want to say Apache 2 with uh, the, um, LLVM exceptions is the license that it's under, I believe. Uh, but it is a totally open source project, so you're good to go in that regard. Um, if you want to go ahead and download it, you'll notice there's some releases over here, but they're actually kind of antiquated. So the, the Windows version is from July 31st, which coincidentally, my birthday, happy birthday to me then. Uh, but you'll find if you scroll down here, there are nightly builds, uh, and hopefully the nightly builds for Linux would actually work as well. It just looks like uh, the 64-bit debug uh, for this one is currently failing. Uh, but those ones seem to build and, uh, yeah, it seems like they're still doing LLVM builds for Linux as well. So if you want to check that out, that is, it's, it's kind of an interesting project. It's basically taking C, leaving C more or less as it is, but adding a small layer on top that is backward, that is, you know, um, it's still C. It's just these extensions allow um, you to check some of the most common and egregious problems that normally occur with C code. So pretty fringe. Uh, I know a lot of you probably aren't working in C in this day and age. And I know a lot of you probably never been exposed to C. You basically would associate C with C++, which is kind of unfortunate because like I said, some of the nicest code I have ever seen in my life was written in the C language. It can be really, really clean. And you're thinking, well, well I want object oriented. Well, you can do that with structs and pointers. And, and what this allows you to do is take those pointers and make them just marginally saner at the expense of a little bit more typing. So that is it. Obviously, this is a research project. Who knows if it will ever go anywhere, if it will ever be incorporated into um, Visual Studio or a mainline project or anything like that. But it's interesting enough that I figured I would do a video on it. So let me know what you thought, what you think of the C programming language. Have you ever experienced super clean C? Because if you ever do, you'll get where I was coming from. If you never have you know what, this is somewhat of a, unless you're working on embedded systems or really low level stuff, C may not be a language for you in the first place, but if you experience some really nice clean C, you'll get what I'm talking about. Anyways, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.